Okay, everybody, welcome to our community call from the Integral Dojo. My name is Miles Kessler, and I'm very happy to be here with some 30 odd people and uh, sharing this space together with my, my old teaching companion, my old friend from back in the day, Patrick Cassidy Sensei. Hi, Patrick, how are you doing? <laughs> well, you know, what is it? We know each other. 30, is it 30 years yet? I think we. Yeah, it's, been at least it's actually about 28, 28, 29 years. Right. We kind of somehow grew up and grew through Aikido together. Yeah. Yeah. Aikido brother. Yeah. And, and there's something. Well, no, I was just going to say there's something interesting about that kind of growing through this journey, some close to 30 years, that in some ways, I mean, you and I have our unique uh, approaches to Aikido, but, but we share a lot of the same perspective. And, and that's what I really enjoy about doing these, uh, these co teachings with you. Well, we all, I think there was a lot of, a lot of overlay in, in our, our interest in, and uh, commitment to the contemplative nature of the art and, uh, yeah. and your work, your travels in Burma and mine in India and, and working with some, some different teachers that I think supplemented it also gave us a, a larger context and a different experience for, for approaching these questions. And I think that we resonate together a lot in that way. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, And in one sense, I mean, I guess in one sense, many of us, certainly probably those who are somehow attracted to this format, this call, this topic, you know, in one sense, we're all kind of on our own hero's journey. But, um, you know, Patrick and I, we actually happen to be the same age, we're just a few months apart. So yeah. culturally, we're very tuned in together. And um, I think our, our, our hero's journeys, let's say, in life, have kind of run parallel, lots of crossing overs too, and parallel paths. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, um, look, I, let me just kind of give a layout. Today, we're going to, for everybody who joined, first, thank you so much for joining us. We're up to about 34 people now. Um, we're going to speak about um, the Dharma of Aikido, which is a very general term, but we're going to, you know, go into it quite, we're going to speak about something that's quite precise in today's talk. And I guess Patrick and I will, will, will talk for about the first, uh, let's say, 15, 20 minutes. We'll share... Our, our individual perspectives. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll open it up for people to kind of jump in with questions or contributions. I definitely, we have some other uh, teachers on the call that would definitely love to bring in Richard and Tija at some point and hear their, uh, their points of view as well. And then, you know, maybe even have time to do a little bit of practice together. So how does that sound, Patrick? Sounds great. Sounds good. Awesome. So um, you want to begin? Well, look. The, the topic the topic is is the Dharma of Aikido. But you and I yesterday we were yesterday we were speaking. We kind of uh -huh. zeroed in on something that's a little bit more specific. If you want, would you like to begin? <laughs> I <can>. sure. <laughs> well, why don't you start off a little bit? Since you, I think you got you've got some steam going, and and just kind of lay out uh, some of the stuff that we said. But I, I'm I'm was kind of waiting to hear what you had to had to put out there. So if you don't mind. Not at all. Yeah, that's great. Great. Uh, so, um, you know, well, where should I start? Let's start since, since the topic is the Dharma of Aikido, let's start with the word Dharma. And, and you know, I, again, my background is Buddhist. So it does, the word Dharma has a very specific meaning, uh, sorry, meaning in a Buddhist context, but, but I believe it kind of, it's a word that we can all kind of more or less uh, agree on. And, and in, in a, in a, Buddhist term, uh, Dharma has a few different teachings. It means, uh, excuse me, a few different meanings. It means the teachings. Um, it also means uh, universal principles. But um, certainly in early Buddhist uh, uh, translation, the word Dharma, I'm not so sure about the later Buddhist schools, but um, I'm sure, you know, they continued. But in the early, early Buddhist uh, translation, Dharma means ultimate realities. Ultimate reality. So if you ever saw the movie, The, the Matrix, yeah, and let's say we're all in the Matrix, and you know, there's, there's stakes over there, and there's some, some guy in leather pants over there, and there's, you know, the agents over there, and whatever, a woman in a red dress, and it looks like reality. Uh, but actually, when, when Neo had his awakening, he actually saw that he, he actually, he died. It was an ego death, he was reborn. And that was his awakening, the metaphorical awakening, and the way that that was symbolized in the movies, that suddenly he saw the code of the matrix and it's just a bunch of zeros and ones that's the dharma so the ultimate reality of of existence 
um, is the term of the Dharma. And it's very specific meaning in, in Buddhism. This isn't the Buddhist call, it's more of an Aikido call, but I do want to kind of make a little bit of an extrapolation there. And, and the Dharma, basically the, the ultimate realities in, in, in the Buddhist text are the, the universal print from a Buddhist sense, the are the universal principles of impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, and non-self or emptiness. And the ultimate Dhamma is, is uh, non-self. You know, it's, that's really the realization of non-self. And when you kind of crack that nut, when you see into the code of existence through, through the lens of non-self, through an intense contemplative, contemplative practice, then the way you view, no, who you are gets completely obliterated and transformed. And how you observe, you, then the incorrect way of seeing the world gets correct. You suddenly have what they call right view. So we just take that, you know, the ultimate reality sense of, of, of the meaning of the word Dharma and look at that in Aikido. Well, you know, Aikido's realization, again, this is my interpretation of it, but Osensei's realization was clearly a non-dual realization. And there was something that was completely unique about his discovery uh, of, of the Dharma of Aikido. And then what became an expression of that Dharma, what we call Aikido today, was that um, it, it, you know, first, first he said that Budo is love. Now, those are two absolute statements. You know, Budo is very much on the relative side of the street. So it's, you know, it's, it's very much a kind of win. It's about war. It's the path of, of a, it is about conflict, but it's, it, you know, Budo, the word Bu, it's a morally good conflict. So it's fighting the good fight. It's not just fighting, but it's fighting the good fight for morally good reasons. And do, meaning a higher path, it's a path that leads to some type of higher realization. But he, then, he, then he took it one step further. He said that this is love. And you know, love in the absolute sense, abs love absolute, unconditional love. So he somehow in a very beautiful kind of non-dual awakening was able to take the fact that it's martial, it's fully martial, and that it's fully spiritual, and that those two cannot be separated. And you know, in a way, it's it's a slightly it's a, it's a further realization from the realization that it's all empty, because in that realization that it's all empty, it's also not only is it all empty, but it's all full. And in the relative side of the street, in our relative expression of the world, there is always going to be conflict. There's always going to be one boundary bumping up against another boundary, creating some pressure, creating some tension, creating some evolutionary tension. And it's either going to break down or one is going to defeat the other or it's going to evolve. And it's that evolutionary moment that ever, you know, the, the actual evolution of those two pound boundaries uh, in conflict under pressure with each other and evolving into a new whole. That movement, that, that, that movement is the movement of Aikido and that movement is the Dharma of Aikido. And that's why Aikido is a, is a non zero sum game zero mm -hmm. sum conflict is always zero sum it's me against you and either i'm smarter or you're smarter i'm quicker or you're quicker i'm more strategic or you're more strategic i'm my technique is better faster stronger or yours is better faster stronger somebody wins somebody loses but in that evolutionary moment where those two imp those two boundaries that can't stay in the same place at the same time under the right conditions, when that pressure helps them to evolve, there's a new awakening, and that new awakening is a new sense of wholeness. And that movement is Aikido. The wholeness isn't Aikido. The wholeness is the result of Aikido. That's a harmony. But it's actually where that pressure comes together and, and they evolve into the new. That, that, what do you say? That evolution is what we're actually, that's the, the sweetest. That's the sweetest nectar. Mm -hmm. That we can get from Aikido. Hmm. So I'll kind of finish it there, Patrick. <laughs> Perfect. I yeah. I I liked what you're pointing out and and um, and marking the, the 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 teaching of Aikido as a Dharma. I think is uh, is is uh, is very appropriate in the sense that that Aikido has resulted from that spiritual perspective that Osensei had come into contact with, and that. And the nature of that dharma is that realization of non-separation or a non-dual perspective. But in the sense, if we break it down in, in, in the world of conflict 
prior to a non-dual perspective, we are we fundamentally are 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 in a in our own narrative. We're in our own story, and this story is what we identify ourselves as being who we are. And this is where most the conflict most uh, most conflict arises in the in the sense of our own personal personal um, personalization of our experience. And in that personalization of that experience, it creates the idea that um, I'm separate from that which I am in conflict with. I'm, 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 not, I'm not unified or I'm not in contact with the world around me. I'm separate from the world around me and I have to defend myself from the world around me. And that's the way our, 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 our operating systems are kind of aligned with. You know, as long as we're identifying with our personality and our personal story as being the content and totality of who we are, we are locked into uh, a, a zero sum uh, relationship with it in the sense that in order for me to protect myself, I have to defend myself from the other. I have to win in, in contrast to, um, to the other person losing. And that operating system is where most martial arts function from, most fighting techniques function from. And why Aikido is so different in my perspective, because it has a Dharma, it has a, it has a spiritual perspective that points out from the realization, hey, wow, I'm not separate from the world around me. I'm, I'm connected with the, uh, with the world around me. I'm actually part of the world around me. I'm unified. And that, that realization can go deeper from a, a, logical realiza a logical rationalization, just simply of, of interconnectedness to a direct experience of, of no one else being there-ness and and the emptiness that supports that fullness that experience of oneness or fullness which is you know is is the statement that osensei made upon his realization i am the i and the universe are one that from that perspective his operating system changed it just radically changed it had to change because the old motivation of protecting myself against another didn't work anymore and so that's why it's i think this transition you know what uh Aikido was was promising was a was a new approach to conflict from the perspective of of unity, and 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 the the evaluation of the success of that is based more on whether or not my response helps stimulate the evolution of the totality, like you said, um, or not, or am I inhibiting that? And so I start to align with a greater sense of who I am on where I want to go in relationship to conflict and conflict becomes an opportunity for the relationship to evolve. And this is not just some, you know, far off fantasy. These are challenges that we all face actually here and now. The, 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 the caregiver in relationship to a, a violent patient, the police officer in relationship to his citizen, ideally, the, the parent in relationship to an angry child, is a dialogue, a dialogue on Facebook. Yes. Yeah, well, if we can get there, yes, absolutely. Right. We exist as a system, and we we benefit when this when we see the relationship is benefiting. We when we damage the relationship, when we damage the other, we damage the relationship. When we damage the relationship, we damage ourselves. Ourself. So that's the simple realization at the logical level. But in a deeply connected level, it becomes actually empathetically. Uh, experienced. It becomes actually something fundamentally experienced at the ground of our being. And the joy in the real, the joy in supporting the we of ourselves to evolve and to grow and to suddenly awaken to a new experience of itself vis-a-vis -vis the, the Aikido and the embracing of conflict, the moving through conflict, the resolving of conflict is a far greater joy than me winning an argument. That's actually not interesting anymore because me winning an argument is actually a denial of something deeper inside myself. Winning right. is not a problem if I'm playing Monopoly, but do I? But in the sense of meeting another person in a dialogue, winning is um, is, is actually dysfunctional, and collaborating and organizing around a greater sense of what we are discovering together is much more fundamentally satisfying to that yeah. larger perspective. Yeah. And that the Aikido embodies that. That's what's so interesting. Aikido embodies yeah. that 
collaborative power po power with the other not power it's, over the other yeah it's collectively collectively satisfying exactly yeah, yeah. And, which and it, it, which doesn't, it doesn't deny its Multiply. capacity to handle conflict because it's, it becomes very, very actually much more functional in a deeper way and in a, in a complete way and in a, in a very physical way when we op operate from that larger perspective of I am with you or I am actually the we with you. I am not separate from you in that we are, that we experience as being who we are and and that benefits who I am, but it also benefits the totality of who we are and that actually is a, um, it's a it's a captivating realization it's a it's a, a deeply enthralling or compelling pull on to move into another phase of ourselves and something that feels uh, true and actually gives a, a greater capacity to meet the unknown and uh, but it changes it changes the way we operate as Aikidoka. It changes the way we approach Aikido itself, actually. Mm. And the nature of approaching Aikido from a place of being a, a, an opportunity for us to um, deepen our relationship to that unity and the faith in that unity and to operate as a collaboration with that unity requires us to let go of the mental identity that we normally associate ourselves with and all of the needing to control the moment as a way to protect oneself and that controlling the moment as a way to protect oneself is the old operating system mm. that's the old way of, of and that's why aikido is also so challenging because it's demanding that we evolve as individuals in order to to to, to function in that we yeah, in order for and in order for that to happen, we need to be in a context that supports that, and that's what yes. an Aikido dojo ideally would be. In order for us to, in order for us to learn how to do that, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, exactly. Yeah, supportive. Yeah, because it, it, uh, obviously we're looking at functioning as that, in that, with that, uh, in in our lives, in in the totality of what we do, not just only within the dojo, but in in er, in every relationship. And of course, the, the ability to see that, the ability to embody that or practice that, and the ability to actually be that in totality 24-7 are all different levels of the path. And, and I'm in no way, shape, or form embodying that 24-7, but I've embodied it enough that I've got the taste that, that it's without a doubt the direction that, that uh, I need to evolve or I feel where Aikido wants to evolve. And not necessarily that it's... Not, that it's I don't want to impose that on other people, but it does feel like a um, self-evident to a certain extent. And, and in that sense, it's got nothing to do with um, people making a belief about it in one way or another, but it's something that is discovered directly. And if it's not discovered directly, then, then, then it's not satisfying. And if it is discovered directly, then it doesn't have to be debated. It's just something that becomes obvious. And a person then moves in that direction compelled by their own inspiration um, uh, or not. And, and in that sense, the, I think the beauty of an Aikido Dojo is that capacity to meet other like-minded people who are willing to take those risks mm. and to meet in that kind of exploration of what is evident or what is obvious to well, Patrick, if, if, if I, Sorry, if I could just get a little clarification. Oh, I think in many, in many cases, it's not self-evident, but what I would say is that it's self affirming that once you do have a taste of that hmm. you, don't need, you don't need anybody else to affirm what you've experienced and from hmm. that point on i think it's self-evident yeah well okay i think we're i agree with what you're saying that for me self-evident refers to the fact that when it's seen it's uh, yeah it's tasted it's, it's tasted complete and it's and it and it's an affirmation in and of itself Yes, exactly. You don't need a teacher or a, or a certificate to say that, that, that that's what happened. Right. But it does take practice to consistently commit to that, to abiding in that, with that, in faith. And, and, and because the, the temptation to go back to the reactivity is very strong because that's, that's where we've, that's where we've, been, we've, uh, we've been conditioned to operate from. So Lifetimes of momentum. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's where the practice that's where the practice goes, and it's difficult, I think, in some of the questions that we're facing now in the Aikido world, 
in terms of wanting to explore Aikido at the level of physical martial capacity, that that is a kind of a question which brings us back to the old operating system and in that sense makes it kind of difficult to 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 align with that greater inspiration and come down and and try to work out the nuts and bolts of how aikido functions in a competitive or or um in an environment in a zero sum way in a zero sum way exactly exactly yeah, let's, let's use an aikido where to... the desire is to control the other or somehow dominate the other yeah right yeah, yeah. Well, Patrick, if that's if we could, then let, let's let's see if we can't uh, move on because I I, I want I definitely want to get yeah. Teja wrote to me that he's he's actually on his way to China soon and he needs to he needs to get out of here so I'd love to bring him in also Richard, but just yeah. you know like like this very point you're mentioning you know you and I both know that you know, that we're we're very much into evolution that that evol like an individual's internal transformational development happens under the right conditions and those conditions for the sense of self will feel like pressure will feel like Sure. Will, will there be a certain certain amount of evolutionary tension. Too much, it breaks down. Too little, nothing happens. You know, we've got to be on the right zone between the comfort zone and the discomfort zone in order to evolve. And you know, we can pressure test our techniques. You know, let's see, and 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 our techniques can get better, faster, stronger through so-called pressure testing. But the individual, the sense of self, can be the still say, I can still be an immature, jerky guy, and be very good at technical aikido. There's no personal transformation that's actually needed to get technically better, but to really shift into that, into that, into that individual evolution or that spiritual transformation, then the sense of self has to have a certain amount of evolutionary tension. And really the only thing that does that is a contemplative approach, some sort of contemplative approach in the practice. Well, the willingness to, I think if, if I'm hearing you right, I, I, it's that that willingness to to let go of the condition the the attachment to the uh, identity that we have conditioned uh, to 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 identify with and the the moving into a larger experience of of who we are at one uh, from an integrated perspective a, a greater sense of who we are as body who we are as heart who we are as as perception and then that dropping in even to a greater uh, dialogue of well, who is who is the source of all this and who am I actually prior to all of this and these things continue to open up to a greater more um, a gestalt experience of ourselves a, almost a sense of a sense of a continuum or a sense of of uh, of of polarities the polarities of who we are. And then the source of that polarity, the, 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 the beginning of who we are, and prior to that beginning, the emptiness of who we are, who we are prior to um, this moment. And that experience um, opens us up to, to suddenly no longer um, evaluating the moment in the way that we used to evaluate it. The, that is suddenly free. And that freeness, that, that freedom to look at the exploration not from the reactivity of uh, our conditioned uh, system which is the fight flight or freeze reactivity but suddenly curiosity starts to show up a capacity to be available as richard moon loves to say that this extraordinary listening shows up this uh, this kind of quality of presence which has no opposition it doesn't need an enemy to to affirm itself. It suddenly becomes available to the moment. That becomes a a, a, a nature of of some of our uh, the way our system functions when we're no longer um, attached to a, a localized identity, and that we start to see the context of our experience as being one without any without any opposite. That ability to suddenly meet the moment and even in the midst of conflict it doesn't deny the unity and that's that bridge i think that osensei was talking about of being standing on a bridge between heaven and earth unity and separation or oneness and conflict and therein lies the capacity to collaborate with that evolutionary movement that you're referring to 
that okay, so, spark so let's, that comes from that. So, so let's take it from there, because I, my whole point was that we have to have a contemplative approach mm. to spend in our practice um, to, 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 to shift into that perspective. And I was yeah. recently in dialogue with Tizia mm -hmm. about this, and, um, and I know he's got to run soon, so I thought I would open the mic and, um, you know, Tisha, if you want to, would you be happy to, would you mind uh, sharing your two cents? Uh, for those who don't know Tisha, he's, a, he's an Aikido sensei, a, a Qigong Sifu teacher, and a Zen Roshi. So there you go. Tisha, um, I'm trying to open your mic. There it is. Okay, great. Great. How you Thank doing, you. Ah, uh, great. Nice to see you, uh, Patrick. And thank you for your wisdom today. It's just beautiful. Miles as well, and um, wonderful to have these moments with you. Um, so uh, I'll just lean in for just a moment with something that um, Miles was talking about and that you, you beautifully referred to as that bridge between um, heaven and earth that O Sensei kind of used in that coded language of his, of his beautiful Dharma. Contemplative practice is important um, but that's not just sitting in meditation, right? Yeah. So in, a, in some ways, it is the ability for, for um, really good uh, quality of self-reflection. And part mm. of that evolutionary part is, is in some ways um, doing whatever other kind of uh, psychological, emotional work we might need to do to gain maturity in this uh, human being, in, in this human life that we have. So the, um, the way that the Buddhists often talk about it is, you know, uh, form is emptiness and emptiness is form. This is another way, uh, Patrick, that you referred to this bridge that O-sensei talked about, heaven and earth, our relative and absolute nature. One in some ways is not greater than the other if we understand that they are intermeshed, intertwined, interpenetrated. Um, but having the contemplative practice helps us to understand and connect with the way that we are interconnected. And this mm -hmm. interconnection opens an amazing quality of, of the human spirit and that is compassion. It's compassion with empathy. Mm. And uh, and if we if we can demonstrate that kind of uh, emotional maturity in in our relationships, this is you know this is such a beautiful flowering and a great mm. um, opportunity that takes place in our Aikido practice. So right. Right. that's something I wanted to contribute there. And I think mm. what you're saying is is so great because it and I what I would take that is that a deep appreciation for Aikido itself as being the that practice that allows us to embody what exactly you're saying. Because prior yes. to Aikido, many contemplative practices didn't include that domain of looking at, at our experience and that unity and that, that, that empathy and compassion that arises from that unity, from an awakened heart, in a in a physical context uh, contained in a violent situation or conflictual situation. And, and to bring that feels like it's untying the final knot of what we do, uh, how we can apply uh, this realization to, to our lives because it, it, it brings it down to the most nitty gritty place, you know, meeting, meeting another in conflict. And so, uh, yeah, that's beautifully, why, said. Uh, beautifully yeah. said, Patrick. And just remember, in, the, in some contemplative traditions, and this is one of the things that I'm trying to do in my Zen communities, and, uh, and that is the original um, inspiration was connected with practices like the uh, Ijin Jing, the Shishu Jing, these embodiment practices that mm -hmm. you know, get you out of just the cognitive Dharma and yeah. into the body. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. one of the one of the great gifts of, of this kind of Qigong practice. Right. Um, and it's the, it's the wonderful, beautiful gift of Aikido for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's awesome, Tija. Oh, thank you so much. You're, you're off to, you're off to China to teach. Um, actually, <laughs> I, I wasn't that clear. 
I was going to China in March, and I am um, I'm on a call to China in a little while. <laughs> oh, <that's funny. laughs> so, yeah, I, I appreciate the opportunity to clarify. That. I will be going. To China, no, 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 I see your message. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, they know China. <laughs> you're going to get a bunch of calls right now. Tasha, you're going to China. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My Great. daughter will call me and say, Dad, you didn't tell me. So. <laughs> well, beautiful. Uh, listen, I don't know if, I, you know, Richard Moon's, his, 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 his camera's open, but I don't see his face. If he's there. I don't see the moon there. Really? There he is. Why don't we open up Richard's mic? And um, Richard, do you want to chime in here? How are you doing, Richard? Good, Patrick. How are you? Good, good. Yeah, I enjoyed our conversation the other day. No, I enjoyed seeing you very much, very much. Hey, yeah. let, me, hey, let me see if I can set this so it points good. towards me here. He just keeps slipping. You know, you're kind of like, it's one of those, you're like the bad guy in the Batman, the old Batman TV show, you're sideways. Can yeah. you- uh, Oh, can okay. You no, I don't know if I can. I, I, uh, I'm just, uh, I don't have my, my stuff set up properly <laughs> there you here. Go. But. There you go. How's it going? Whatever. Man? Who cares how I look? Um, it's great. Uh, the other thing that you forgot to include in your introduction of Tija is he's a musician. Ah, right. Mm. He's actually one of the more exceptional musicians. And uh, it's one of the other things he's that Tija... He's not the only one either. Yeah, that Tija and I have shared. And um, I think, I, you know, Patrick, I think you know this, but I, Miles, I can't remember where we left off in our dialogues. And for those of you who, who don't know me, but um, I came into Aikido because I got the sense that it would help my music. I was never a martial artist per se, although I did get kind of into it. But let me see, there are a couple points that, I don't wanna to take too much time, but there are a couple points that seem to surface for me, to relevate for me. One was we're in a universe of two forces. And we talk about it in terms of heaven and earth, and we talk about it in terms of a wave particle. And for those of you into that kind of thing, the idea that, that whatever shows up as matter is also energy and could be seen either way is, is uh, you know, is light a, a wave or is it a particle? And um, so I wanna say that we're, we're dealing in a vastness here that as they say, uh, the infinite potential of the energy collapses into the moment in the form of a particle. And as soon as we go into words, we, we start to limit very much our understanding of uh, that universal. And it's not just uh, whoever the bad guys are imposing the matrix on us. And certainly every society seeks to impose its view of the universe, its mm. particle view of an infinite realm on its participants or its citizens. But the probably, to me, the most important piece is the place where we ourselves start to believe our own thinking or as we form things into words, actually start to fixate as if that were so. So I, the, you guys know me, so the rest of you, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know this, I think this drives most people crazy about me too, but is the sense that at the same time that we have our, conversations, we have to remember that um, there are ways, uh, maybe they're a window on something that's so vast and so infinite that staying in that infinite potential at the same time that we function in our daily life and get our tax forms done um, is the art. And we've talked a lot about the floating bridge of late, which I think received very little attention and recently, it seems, and maybe our conversations are part of it seems to be coming up and it's the idea that you have to be in both places at once. You have to be in a place that seeks understanding and a place that recognizes that, uh, what was the old S thing? Understanding is the booby prize. And um, so as we go to explore this, I kind of want to say Aikido is a word. It probably means something different to every one of us on this call and everyone who mm -hmm. practices it. And, you know, usually when we would go out to, well, we did a lot of corporate consulting work and uh, the people who knew Aikido, isn't that the one where you use their energy against them? Mm. And, you know, I, I understand the picture, but I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to come to here is hold it lightly um, as we speak to it, 
we were, we uh, I think Miles and Patrick and I've had a moment on what I was calling the two islands that you know humanity's in this ocean of the infinite. And there are two islands and we're swimming towards them. And I don't know how much we're conscious of the fact that if we swim towards the island that Patrick was describing where it's about winning and losing, uh, it sets up a dynamic, uh, what Osensei called a reciprocating echo. Uh, what I said, you know, an island where whoever's smarter or stronger takes advantage of whoever's weaker or, or not as smart. And there's also an island where everyone who's smarter and stronger helps develop everyone who doesn't have their capability. And I think in the realm that we call Aikido, there are people swimming in both directions. Clearly, you guys are swimming towards an island of development. And, um, you know, somebody once said to me, what does he mean by evolutionary Aikido? And I thought, well, you have to understand, I'm almost done here. The uh, guy that they studied with uh, did what he called traditional Aikido and made a big deal out of doing it just the way Osensei did it. Uh, so I think maybe the simplest way I said it was I didn't really study with Bob and I have been of late so grateful for what I've been able to get from him and, and what he's brought to us. And uh, I didn't really study with Osensei, although my God, what a phenomenal being this man must have been but that Osensei bowed to what he called the Aikikami. And I would encourage all of us to seek that direct connection with the infinite. And I think what you guys are doing with the evolutionary work is pointing towards, uh, you know, thank God that there were some great masters who wrote those classical pieces that so many people play. But um, before they wrote them, you see, they didn't exist. Yeah. And so, this idea that what was done is the end all and be all or following traditional Aikido, uh, there was something so beautiful in Mr. Saito's desire to really honor what Osensei did. But I think that what you guys are doing with the idea of saying that we ourselves now have to do something more with it. We have to go beyond the particle as existed, dissolve back into the infinite potential and allow it to manifest through each of us individually and there isn't one form unique. in that sense. Yeah, right. that each of us will produce a unique yeah. song right. or form of Aikido or way of being in the world. And if we can do that in harmony with each other, then we'll produce a beautiful concerto and uh, symphony. And if not, we'll end up on the other island where most of the resources go to weapons and um, uh, arguing you know, destruction and whatnot. So God bless mm -hmm. you for your work. And I hope that was of some value. Yeah, Richard, thank you so much. I just, I didn't, I failed to re, uh, to introduce Richard. Uh, Ellie reminded me. Uh, Richard Moon Sensei has been a t uh, an Aikido teacher for a long time uh, <laughs> in the Bay in the Bay Area. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I don't know if I can give you a proper introduction, Richard, but I would say Richard's one of the first people that I saw, you know, uh, doing jazz in Aikido. What, what I mean by that is a really spontaneous, free response, Giawaza, that was uh, congruent with, you know, with with the the oncoming quote unquote attack, and uh, I think that's that's had a big impact on a lot of people actually. It had a big influence on my development, Richard, and yeah. I think it, it it it's a reflection of what we've been talking about with regards to opening up to the universal. Is that ability to open up to the universal and in, to come into contact with that experience of being in in. In okay. union with, with the moment or in union with the attack opens up an intelligence which functions prior to the, the movement of thinking. And that allows for spontaneity to occur, a spon spontaneous response which is in sync with its environment, part of its environment. It doesn't mean you're invincible, but it means that you're moving from a different kind of um, base. You're no longer... Uh, strategically attempting to control the moment with uh, uh, with with thinking and technique, but you're looking at a at the unity itself, kind of uh, um, being the source of the response. And so I think there's a there's something there about that exploration, that jazz, that that spontaneous uh, responsiveness that can come up in a jiwaza, which is incredibly valuable. It's not. I don't think it's a totality of what we're talking about, but it's a reflection of, of that nature. And um, 
and I've, uh, that's a, a gift I think I've received from you, mm -hmm. Richard, in, in that development. So it's very cool. Well, you know, listen, Patrick, we, we've got about yeah. 15 minutes left. So I think that yeah. maybe, what do you say we give some people a chance to raise their hands and ask a question or uh, add a comment? Um, if, is that, does that sound okay? That sounds great. That sounds so great. listen, at the bottom of your screen there, you'll see a participant, uh, I think it's the chat button actually. If you click the chat button, uh, a window will open on the side and you'll see a place to raise your hand. If it's not the chat button and it's the participant button, it's one of those two. And on the side, you'll see raise hand, et cetera. Um, that's the electronic raising your hand. So if anybody wants to jump in um, and make a comment uh, or ask that's a question. That's the participation button. Yeah, Kelly says it's the participant button to raise hand. Yeah. Great. And uh, we will, you know, so if you have a question, um, first one up will be first one served. I see Mark over there doing something, trying to figure it out. You can raise your physical hand too if you can't. Fit. If you're too, if you're, if you're too old to <laughs> figure it out, just raise your hand. <laughs> right, mic, mic's open. <laughs> so it's me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll go to Mandy after Mark. Okay. Wait, wait, hang on. Yeah. Then we'll go to Mandy next. Okay. Uh, first things first. Miles, thank you for doing this. Uh, Patrick, really nice to see you again. It's been a long time. Uh, in a certain way, I think it would be fair to say that the questions I thought I was going to ask before, you guys have just answered it by articulating so well um, this terrain we're in, you know, in this, uh, this place on the bridge between these two um, places, both of which need to be respected. Uh, sometimes Frank Duran sensei in, in his seminars will say, you know, you're all doing this perfectly. It's your partners that are messing it up. You know? <laughs> Which of course he's saying, <laughs> speaking to all of us. And um, the reason I start with that is uh, I've been a, not practicing Aikido for about a year. Um, I have been, <laughs> I have done a little bit uh, with a, a local group. I'm not at home now. I've been away from home for about a year, sort of on retreat. I won't define that now. But um, so in, in my small interactions with this group I've been with, and it actually somewhat in my anticipation of going back to the dojo where I was, um, I've been thinking a lot about how, I can partially answer this, but I'd really be way more interested in your answers than mine. Uh, if I'm in recognition or trying as best I can in a Zanshin kind of way to remember uh, what I can do to make these interactions <coughs> um, cooperative and pointing towards or trying to uh, integrate with the, the inquiry and the realization that this art I think is also moving towards, uh, it, it can be very different if the people you're training with uh, don't aren't faced that way or don't even know to face that way. I mean, you know, on a good day, we can all be like trying to be really soft, you know, and kind of try and cooperate, like kind of like the more blendy kind of physical aspect of the practice. But there's another thing that happens when, when you're trying to do even more than just blend, but you're recognizing like everyone's doing self-inquiry, okay, as well. Um, and so I just thought maybe someone could say something about the fact that this is a partner practice, even though we're all on our own individual Dharma. Um, yeah, I think that's the essence of my question. Well, maybe I'll just I'll just jump in quick, and then Patrick will pass it to you. Um, it, what was interesting about your question, Mark, was that you know, you know, it was about the other. What, what do you? How do you do when the other people aren't playing your game? They're not also doing a contemplative practice, and I mean that that is a problem. But remember, it's a problem for the eye. It's a problem for the self. It's a problem right. for the objective sense of right. self. And if Aikido is meant to be a higher path of practice, meaning it leads to some type of spiritual realization, if not a complete spiritual realization, <coughs> excuse me, uh, then we have to be doing, that's what I was saying before about contemplation, we have to be working with the sense of self. And any moment of aggression is an affirmation of the self, not a contemplation of the self. Any moment of, of, um, of uh, aggressive or, or being passive, like, you know, fight, flight, moving away, is a sense of self-preservation, not a contemplation of the self. And any bullshit, excuse my language, but bullshit, passive, aggressive games that you're playing within that kind of human dynamic is also just an affirmation of the self. So if you're being aggressive or passive or passive-aggressive, 
quite literally, you're strengthening the ego. And from my opinion, you can't do, you cannot do Aikido if you're being aggressive. Idimi is fine. It's impersonal, but not if you're being aggressive or if you're being passive, like moving away because there's fear or if you're being passive aggressive, somehow controlling by, you know, holding back or whatever. So those three things, you know, talk about pressure, you know, talk about creating those, that evolutionary tension, try doing Aikido without being aggressive, but still full Aikido, fully martial, fully spiritual. Don't be aggressive. Uh, don't be passive and don't be passive aggressive because the ego <laughs> doesn't get, that's all the ego gets. That's it. In a, in a conflict, that's all it gets. So that setting up those conditions and then having a partner who's also setting up those conditions, we can't make the other person do what we would ideally dream. And everybody gets triggered, you know, but setting up those conditions and if both people actually hold those conditions, that'll create a kind of a mutual uh, uh, tension, mutual pressure for us to kind of evolve into something else. So I think, you know, it, it starts with us. And then, you know, if we're all kind of trying to create a context together where we're, where we're doing that practice, then, um, you know, then, then we have the conditions for evolution to happen or, or not. Mm -hmm. Patrick? Yeah, you know, Mark, I, I appreciate your, your, your question because I think it, it points to a lot of where Aikido is getting challenged in the sense that, that okay, I'm, I'm in, I want to be in accordance. I want to be coherent with its principles. I want to abide in the vision of Aikido. And then what happens when I come up and run up against somebody who is not meeting me in that space? How do I function with somebody who is having a bad day or resisting or, or aggressive or, or anything along those lines, even though we're training in Aikido Dojo or outside the Aikido Dojo for that matter? Uh, how, do I, how do I bridge that gap so that I can be spontaneous flowing and and this beautiful expression of these principles that i so so deeply uh, are connected with uh, i don't know, I mean to to rephrase the question but that's kind of what i feel you're talking about and um you know what just i want to interrupt I, you just for a second uh just yeah. as a clarification i guess mm. really what's fundamentally underneath my question because you're, you're answering mm. my question so what i'd like to add i guess is to, to be on the bridge between duality and non-duality and separation mm. uh, is hard when you don't really have a strong realization of non-duality. You know, yeah. conceptually for sure I have it. So it just tends to lean more, you know, towards the other side of the bridge just by, by virtue of... By you know, default. Okay, so, you know. no, I, get, I get what you're saying and, I, and I'm okay. going to address this not in a, in a direct expert way, but in a way that I think you, you can relate to. Okay. In the sense that we all can relate to those relationships that we have, uh, parent-child or um, teacher-student or caregiver-patient or in some level where we feel on a, one level a deep connection with this other individual for whatever reason. And, and, it, and that, you know, between a father and a, and, and a son or a, a uh, mother and a daughter or mother whatever mother and child there's a realization i love you i'm unified with you i'm there for you i'm i'm with you and in conflict there's still conflict and and maybe i'm not able to express that that freedom of that love in the conflict so easily but it doesn't change the fact that i'm i'm unified with you and there's no doubt in that and that's there's two things that are happening simultaneously one is the negotiating of the, of the conflict. The other is the unity of the relationship. And the unity of the relationship is not challenged no matter what the conflict is, because that's the ground that we stand on. So when you, when you move into that phase with everyone you meet, you're doing Aikido. That doesn't change the fact that there's conflict. It doesn't change the fact that the person may be attacking you with violent intent. But as soon as you leave that world, you're you're in two again, you're in two, two land again, and there's the, the, the whole thing gets shifted. And it's in a certain degree, it's, you, you can kind of just like choose it. And when you choose it, it, it changes the way you operate. And it just, it, you don't take the attack personally. You don't take the violence personally because you realize that the imbalance that they're expressing in conflict is, the, is within themselves and if, and if you're at a place where you're open and available then that imbalance uh, you're able to 
to welcome that imbalance as another aspect of the moment. It's not a threat, but it still exists. It is a threat maybe at the physical level, but it's not a threat to your identity because your identity is no longer something you're trying to protect anymore. You're much more looking at the nature of what's going on and that changes the way the, that, that functions. And it doesn't require a non-dual experience to ground yourself in that. It can with just the, the good heart that you have and the deeper understanding that that's true, even in, in maybe moments of that realization, you don't have to be embedded in that realization 24 seven in, in order to do Aikido. It's just that kind of choice to go from here on out. I'm gonna do the best I possibly can at meeting conflict from that perspective, I am with you rather than I'm against you because it, I, I have the maturity, it's a shift in maturity. There's the state realizations which occur in meditation, but they come and go. But they, there's the maturity of choosing to operate from that unified perspective is something that develops over time. And that's something that can be stimulated regardless of the meditative experience. If, if the person is just has an open heart and empathetic soul, they could start to see the, the truth of that in very basic uh, relationships that we have in life, you know, with our partners, with the, with the people that we care about. And uh, uh, that's, that's, that's where I would in order to encourage that. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? It, it, it totally does. And don't worry, Gato. It's a great answer, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I, Patrick, I was just going to say, not only does is the maturity kind of a, you know, a, a place that we arrive to and we say, okay, I got to make that choice. But when you do make that choice, mm. that choice itself cooks you like hell. Yeah. yeah. The very, that, yeah, that, that that's, you that's will. Pressure. Yeah. That's, that's pressure. pressure. Yeah, that's I hear that. Pressure. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Mark, thank, yeah. you. thank you. Welcome back to the marketplace. Oh, I hate that phrase. <laughs> well, one more thing to work with. I hate that. <laughs> Great. Okay. No, no. One more thing to let go. All right. So um, listen, so we've got about four more minutes uh, on the official time. Mandy's got her hand up. If anybody else has their hand up, uh, you can, or if anybody wants to jump in, you can raise your hand. Um, listen, uh, I've got time to go over a little bit. Um, I'm not sure about you, Patrick. Yeah, I can, I, I can give my, I can uh, stretch it out just a bit. Sure, of course. Okay, if, so, so if since, I'll tell you what, that. since we, we ha we're officially meant to stop on the hour, we'll just make a couple of announcements here and then we'll go. And if anybody has to go, thank you very much for joining us. And um, if you can stick around a little bit longer, then we'll, we'll go to Mandy's question. Jason Tucker also has a question. So let me just see, look at my notes here. Um, so Patrick and I are doing these calls as a lead up to a seminar that Patrick's going to tell us about in a, in a, in a moment. Um, but we're going to be doing one more call. We would hope to do two more calls, but it's actually, it turns out both of our schedules are really packed. So we're trying to find a good time. But the next community call like this will be on Tuesday, April. It'll be a Tuesday next time, same time uh, in April, April 10th. So uh, please uh, keep your... Uh, eyes open. If you already registered, you'll get more information. You'll, you'll get a reminder for that. So we'd love to have you join us. Um, you can find more about Patrick Cassidy and the work that he does at uh, www.aikidomontro.com. You can find uh, more about the work that I do at theintegraldojo.com. And um, yeah, and that's that's it. Patrick, you, and, and Patrick wants to tell us a little bit about an event that him and I are going to be co-teaching in May. Mm. In May, uh, we're looking at uh, our yearly. May, I hope. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> uh, we're looking at our yearly event, um, the Riviera Seminar, and uh, it's uh, this year. It's going to be the um, uh, the eighteenth, nineteenth, and twentieth, and twenty-first of May. Uh, we, and we're looking at the, this specific question of of um, the realization or the understanding of non-duality in the midst of conflict. So it's actually aligned with this conversation very much. So, and uh, it'll be, we're hosting it here in Switzerland uh, with uh, a three-day Aikido seminar and a one-day mm. to attend. We have uh, more information on the Riviera Is it just me or is, is Patrick faded away for everybody? Yeah, okay. All right, let's wait a second till he comes back. And then everybody just nod your head like you understand. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. Wow, he really froze, huh? 
All right, let's uh, let's Can give you hear it me? Uh, Yeah, you're back, Patrick. Yes. Maybe okay. you'll start over with the um, first. Where is it? Right. So it's it, we're hosting it here in Montreux. We'll be actually it'll be in Vevey, which is about ten minutes drive away from from the dojo. Um, we will be um, uh, doing a three-day event, three-day Aikido event, and uh, with a one-day workshop on Monday. And, um, and everybody's welcome to join us. We are uh, capable of finding new places to stay if you're interested in, in uh, couch surfing or staying at the dojo here in Montreux. And uh, it's a, one of our, our uh, big events for the year and inspiration uh, considerably. It's always creative time. So we'd just like to send out a, an invitation to everybody to uh, feel free to join us if you have the inspiration and, and the time to uh, to, to make it, you'd be more than welcome. Yeah, I just, I just love to say that, it, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those places, it's one of the events that, you know, this Sangha, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and other, you know, this, there's more than just the virtual Sangha we have here, but a lot of people from all around Europe, even, even they come from the States uh, and here in Israel, uh, we gather together and, uh, you know, Patrick and I do uh, some of our most collaborative explorative work together i guess in the mm. seminar and um we highly, I highly recommend you to, to join us if you could patrick is there a website for the riviera seminar yeah riviera seminar com. <clears throat> okay you can uh, also riviera. find a link you can find a facebook page event um being hosted by both integral dojo and aikido montreux and uh, there will be a, a link on that Facebook event as well as on my website, aikidamotro.com. So uh, there are a couple of different ways of, of um, getting more information. And if you need to, you can uh, just email, the, email our dojo and we'll, we'll respond if you have any more questions. I just put the link in the chat box. So if you guys want to click that, it'll, it'll open. Perfect. Up. Thank you. All right. Great. And just, for, just to remind everybody, we'll be meeting again on April 10th. It's a Tuesday, Tuesday evening if you're in Europe, Tuesday morning if you're uh, in North America. Yeah. Great. So, um, <clears throat> all right. So we'll go on. We got two more hands up. There's Mandy Barber and then Jason Tucker. So we'll go to Mandy first. Hi, Mandy. How are you? Wait, I can't open you. Oh, there you go. Okay. Your mic's open. <laughs> Fine. How are you? Good. Um, yesterday, I... Um, after class with Nadal Shihan, um, I asked um, him a couple questions. He's been um, getting ready for his um, Osensei Re Revisited um, seminar at the end of uh, April, the three-day seminar in California. And so he's been kind of laying out in class um, an outline of what he's going to be doing. Um, so. Um, we discussed Takimusu Aiki, um, the meditation um, that um, was our last module. And um, his take on that was um, okay, to, okay, okay, first the center, uh, in order to do a good meditation on that, first the center line, establish the center line, and um, if you're going to use breathing as a reference, the breath being um, the bridge between heaven and earth, okay. and that's uh, the oneness. Okay, so the ideal of the oneness, and then the conflict of the dualism, okay, was on a line this way. So what he actually did was put it the cross. Okay. So he said, in order to get a good lineup in that meditation is to be the center of those two lines, the cross. Um, and um, it, it has helped the meditation for me. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's um, just something he put out there. Um, and then um, I asked him, uh, we talked about, about uh, an hour, so I won't go into any, any more detail, but um, the, the difference between presence and, and awareness, um, and was it the same? And he said that presence 
and awareness can be the same at some levels um, in some dimensions. However, pre it starts with presence. Presence is like the frame. And once you have the presence, then that allows for the awareness to come through and they can become one. But you have to have the presence first, the mindfulness first, and then the awareness will come through that and then they become one at, at a certain, certain levels. So I just wanted to put that out there because I know that our last meditation was on Takimasu Aki, um, Aiki, and I was uh, having some difficulties um, with that meditation until I reached a, a point where um, my breathing was just not in my body, but went way up and then way down. Um, and then that's what I asked him about. What, what's that? What's going on there? And so that's, you know, it, that's a comment I have. Um, and I'm just wondering what your take on that is, Patrick or Miles. Hey, Patrick, I have a sick little girl here. I, sure, get to her I some can, water. I can oh, respond. Water. I'll be right back. No problem. Mandy, I, I think, uh, uh, I, we did, it's ironic because I just had a conversation with Nado last week and Richard Moon. We were talking about a lot of these things, and um, and what I think what I think I refer to as presence it has an embodiment aspect to it. It's not just only mindfulness, but it's also a certain kind of embodied experience of oneself, and that embodied experience of oneself helps uh, us move out of a projected sense of ourselves so mm -hmm. it's very difficult to be in the past very difficult to be projecting into the future when yeah. we're actually really deeply um, experiencing ourselves at the physical and emotional and the perceptive levels right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's where the awareness starts to kick in because right. as, if we're not embodied uh, awareness can we become we can become aware of our ideas and we're starting to explore our ideas and our awareness is functioning through ideas but it's not aware of our of actual our experience and that's where martial arts where aikido functions is in the experience of of our world if i'm projecting my ideas of uke i'm responding or reacting to those ideas rather than actually responding to the the experience of uke right then and there and i think the word presence for me that's that's what that refers to mm -hmm. which includes the cognitive uh, realization but it doesn't necessarily um it's not just limited to that it's also being fundamentally present in our emotional uh, dimension and in our physical dimension so that we are really um uh, grounded in our moment by moment experience of being alive and that then helps be the the framework for for being more awake to what's happening in this moment here and now. And that's, that's my take on that. I don't mean to say that that's when the do means to say, but from what I'm hearing, that's where I would go with, with what you're trying to explore. Okay. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yes, oh yes, yeah. that makes okay. sense. Because you have to, in order to, uh, in order to, to have a state of being, you have to have the physical, um, not just the idea. Um, you have to have the whole physical body. Right, right. Yes. And you have to have to, you have to be in that, you have to be congruent with that physical experience of oneself. Yes. Rather than, rather than our ideas of ourselves, we start to actually connect with the reality of ourselves and being present in our experience at the physical level is the beginning of that, of that inclusion or that integration of who we are. And that can go in and include the nature of, um, of the intelligence that exists in the body, the intelligence that exists in the emotional nature of ourselves, which is not contained within the cognitive, logical, um, logical rational processing part of thinking. It exists uh, in collaboration with it, but it's not contained in thinking. And this, these forms of intelligence help us respond uh, more, in, uh, more fully 
in the moment. And then that larger universal experience then can give a context for these different domains of who we are and, uh, and for all of them to be honored and to function. And then that al allows for the capacity to even include what we refer to as the unconscious nature of ourselves or the shadow nature of ourselves, which mm -hmm. is another aspect of our being, which needs to be met as simply emerging in the moment, simply that is there. And that has, a, that has an influence on who we are and is, is part of that part of that system of ourselves that wants to be integrated into the totality, into the, into the conscious nature of ourselves. And the, that, that domain, it requires that, that deep level of presence and anchored in the body, uh, in the heart and, and in the mind in order for it to be able to be truly uh, included and integrated. And, and I think there's a, a tremendous amount of work that can go into, into that part as well. Okay, good. Thank so, you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Thank you for, for offering. So I don't know, yeah. Miles, Miles, you back? Yeah, yeah, I'm back. I, I would just add that um, we got a couple of more hands up here. So I would just add that, that many, I'm not so sure about the, the state of being. You need to be in the body because I, I think that people can have states of being but be disembodied. Mm -hmm. Or schizophren a schizophrenic can be in a state of being, but they're just, they're, they're kind of schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. But for, for sure what you're talking about, a fully integrated state of being, then yeah, we need the body, mind, heart, spirit, shadow, etc. cetera. And, um, and just in terms of what Nado Sensei is talking about with Taki Musuraiki, I mean, it sounds good to me. Again, his terminology, I'm, I'm not so, uh, what do you say? I don't know completely what, what he means with his terms. But I would say, you know, Taki Musu, really a, a state of Taki Musu, is quite a tall order in the sense that we need to be vertically aligned in some type of unity consciousness or emptiness or oneness, <coughs> excuse me, and horizontally plugged in, you know, horizontally plugged in on all the dimensions and, and experience that. And, and if we can be in a state of being in those two, where, where those two dimensions come together at the, at the, the let's say the, this junction, then yeah, Takimusu does tend to happen, but for most people, you gotta you gotta work the verticals and you gotta work the horizontal. And you gotta work the, you know. There's kind of a going back, a duality to it until it kind of comes together. Takimusu uh, Aiki, I think it's the it's the essence of, of what we're doing in Aikido. I think it's also the pinnacle. So it's uh, in one sense it's simple, but if you really you know learn the rules like a pro, so you can break the rules like an artist. If you really learn the rules like a pro. And then you shift into Takimusu. It's a very different experience than with somebody who's a beginner and gets stuck. It's the same Takimusu, but it looks very different. It's, 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 for me, it's like uh, poetry. A person can know 10 words in a language and can write poetry, but their poetry will be limited to those 10 words. And a person who's got a 10,000 word vocabulary and suddenly opens up to poetry, their capacity to express poetry is much broader, deeper, and fuller. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so there's, a, there's that capacity to drop into poetry is, is inherent in each individual. That's the takemusu, but the capacity to share it is developed. And, uh, and that's where the, the, the mastering of techniques gives a larger, greater um, depth of that expression. I don't know if yeah, that, if that resonates together, with your miles, but- uh, Yeah, it's coming yeah. together with the absolute and the relative. Yeah, yeah. So let's go Should on- we, uh, yeah. yeah, Jason Tucker. Jason, your mic is open. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, thank you. This was a great talk on it. Um, I know a lot of this is kind of the, uh, the mental, the spiritual level, but just to kind of step back for a moment of the connection to the physical practice on this, mm -hmm. um, Aikido is my primary style, but I do participate in um, excuse me, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Judo. So I understand the seduction of the dominance of, I need the submission, I need the, uh, the Ippon, the win. So that, but Patrick mentioned something early on of saying uh, that kind of the zero sum of getting into the, the, not just the dominance, but the control. So I was wondering, you know, in all kind of physical practice, even with the most well-behaved uh, uke, we reach a level where it's kind of, uh, I'm guiding, I'm somewhat manipulating, I'm interacting in that is, you know, where do you find the, is kind of the border of the point where I'm no longer, um, you know, seeking that, uh, that, that win, that dominance, but still having a, an impact, a connection, a control. Um, Miles, can I respond to this? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So Jason, it's a very good question. And I think it's interesting because I, 
actually the takemusu is not necessarily inherent in Aikido alone. And it's a movement, what I think you're talking about, the movement from attempting to, to, to subtly, either overtly control your experience or subtly control your experience. It's still you trying to control your experience. Mm-hmm. And um, now the, the shift into a, a, a state where, you're, where your response is emerging, emerging in a unified experience with the moment is based on a couple of different things. One is letting go. Two is, is having the, 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 the capacity of, at the level of the body to, to be present in that experience. And three is an intention. So I've, I've studied, spent a lot of time studying with Peter Ralston. Peter Ralston has a very powerful capacity to respond uh, spontaneously, extraordinary. But his intention is not aligned with the greater we. It's always, it's still about uh, domination, control, and, and keeping the upper hand in a conflict situation, which, okay, I can acknowledge. And there's nothing per se wrong about that. But it's an intentionality which is still focused on me, me being over the other as a way to win. And, and Sistema also works in many similar principles of, of spontaneity, which allow for the response to come out of sync in that, so coming out of sync in the moment. So it does require the mind to let go, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the system is aligned with a, with a unitary perspective that exists in Aikido. That's kind of an emotional choice that you make or comes from a deeper realization. And that intention has to be contained within the, within the individual. And it's, it's like, um, imagine if you were in, in conflict with somebody that you love and they were sleepwalking for some reason, they were in a nightmare, right? And they, uh, they couldn't get out of the nightmare and they were attacking you because they, they felt like you were somebody that they needed to attack. You just, you move into that space and there's nothing, there's, you're not against them. The whole point of the matter is that you realize you are with them. But if you destroy them, you would destroy part of yourself. You wouldn't be able to live if you, if you responded with violence or aggression because you love them so much. And yet you need to respond, not just for your sake, but for their sake as well, for the sake of the relationship. And that then drives your intention. That is what gives you the capacity to move into this space, not thinking about what you're going to do, but being available to the moment so that the moment can tell you what to do. And that for me, that's Takemusu. Now, I, you know, I'm not going to speak for Miles, but that's, that for me, that's, that would be the best, yeah, one totally. of the best definitely to, totally. to get in touch with. And therein lies your intention. But being just, being just talking, just being spontaneous, being able to let go of the mind, let go of the needing to try to control, you can in still conflict. kick somebody's ass. In, in conflict. conflict. Yeah. In conflict, Art. you can still kick somebody's ass yeah. by just being intent on that. You just let go and you're going to decide to kill them. And I know a number of people are really good at that. But in order to open to that larger perspective, there's a shift in, in a deeper value structure. And that's, that's where Aikido changes track from the other arts that I've, I've mentioned and, and why I'm in love with it, why I feel like I, I get so enthralled by that, because it, it points to a capacity that I feel is, is actually deeply functional in my relationships with my world. And um, so I think there's, there's, we could go much further, but I think looking at your intention will help bridge that, make that capacity to drop into that deeper state of spontaneity that you're, that you're attempting to connect, uh, connect up with in your practice and, uh, and allowing that perhaps in your Aikido practice. I don't know what the next step would be for you, but that's, that's what I would have to offer. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I would even say looking at your intention, I would say, I would say, questioning your intention, inquiring, in, you know, doing a contemplation of, of your intention, because that actually gets to the subjective sense of self. And that's where the illusion of control exists. And, you know, I mean, on, on, like on the, on, the, on, the, on the martial side, on the, on the technical side, by all means, you know, better, faster, get, get as good as you can, you know, learn and, and you know, like the old, the old metaphor of the soul, you know, the sword, you know, sword making, you pound it for years, Mm-hmm. You got the shape, the form, the kata. Then you sharpen it for years until it, you know, it, it cuts, and then you polish it. So the higher practices should be more refined. But what we're refining is not just the forms. We have to be refining the sense of self. The, the, you know, that's why it's a spiritual practice. And for me, you know, there's like a, a mind experiment we could play with. You know, imagine 
I don't know, Jason, imagine you and I, Aikido is not about fighting, it's not about competition, but imagine we fought with only Aikido, who would win? Uh, maybe you, maybe you're younger and quicker, you got some judo in your background, you might beat me. You know, I have a little bit more experience, I might beat you, you know, whatever. But imagine that I fought, again, we don't fight in Aikido, but just imagine in this mind experience that I fought against Saito Sensei, my teacher. He's no longer alive, but let's say when he was, before he was really kind of, you know, when he was old, he wasn't so strong, but when he was in his prime, I, there would be no, there would be no competition. You know, he would beat me hands down. You know, and even though I was young and stronger, he just had so much more experience. Now imagine Saito Sensei fighting, even though we don't fight in Aikido, it's a mind experiment, fighting O Sensei. Who would win that one? Well, we all know that O Sensei would win because this, you know, in this mind experience, O Sensei, in this mind experiment, O Sensei is the, 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 the archetype of Aikido. He's the guy. So and now imagine O Sensei and a clone of Osense, an exact clone, not a reduced copy, but an exact clone. In other words, the same skill, the same physical ability, the same strength, the same memory, the same history, the same psychology, the same knowing all the same tricks. Imagine Osense fighting Osense. So who would win that fight, Jason? They're exactly the same in every way. <laughs> exactly was, the same. Nobody, nobody knows another trick or a little, you know, they're faster or anything like that. I don't know. It's it's hard to look at it from O oh, sensei. I can't even think of the concept of like dominance of assertion on it here. It's connection. As well, far that's, as the, yeah. there you go. But that so that's 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 the whole point. It's the O oh, sensei that was the aggressor would lose. Mm -hmm. and that's what makes Aikido Aikido. Because it's, you know, and again, let's say that we can get into that archetype in that space on a good day or maybe, you know, a good year or whatever. We actually are in that place where we're not the aggressor, we're not passive, we're not passive aggressive, and we're able to absorb the attack, and then the attack right, goes right back onto the aggressor. And that's what makes Aikido Aikido. It's not about being better, faster, stronger, knowing more, although that can help you in Aikido. So it kind of gets down to that same essential thing. And if we can stay in that place, can you imagine being in a place like that where you're not? for even a moment, even a hair aggressive or a hair passive or a hair passive aggressive, the ego will go nuts. It'll like, that will cook the subjective sense of self like hell and something will happen. You might win, you might lose, you know, if it's a competition. Uh, there's nothing wrong with competitions, you know, they're totally fine. But just for me, we just need to make a very clear distinction about, you know, what is Aikido and what is, what is the nature of this art of Aikido and what is the nature of another and it's totally fine you know I, I like a good competitive game I'm into that you know it's fine mm -hmm. but also I know that you know I just become better faster stronger and I'm 54 and you know there's there's a diminishing return ahead of me with that path for sure mm -hmm. whereas I know with the Aikido path there's a there's a what's the opposite of diminishing return a greater return greater limited it's return. satisfaction so it's, it's certainly a much more satisfying practice so, thanks, Jason. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And we got one more hand up, Don Ellingsworth from Tampa Aikido. Hey, Don, how's it going? It's going great, Miles. Great to see you guys. Um, I was just um, actually uh, hearing Jason's question it was very similar to what I had in mind to, to ask about, but more concrete, more pragmatism. You know, um, what does this kind of contemplative practice look like when you're training in the dojo? Like, what is when you're thinking about a contemplative practice, now you're leaving a room full of people. We all want to try this contemplative practice, right? We're calling it. What does that look like and how do you lead that? Not everybody wants to try it, I can tell you. <laughs> but let's just, let's just assume that they do. Let's assume you we've sure. convinced everyone this is a good idea, right? So, okay, let's do it. And then, okay, okay, now, okay here we are. Now what? What's next? Well, I'll just say three things and I'll pass it to Patrick. No. You know, first, okay, everybody stop, close your eyes, feel the ground, feel your breath, feel your center, some type of centering. There's millions of centering exercises. So that turns their, their attention to their interior. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, when we're, when we're in conflict, all, all of our awareness goes to the exteriors and we forget about the interiors. So that's what it would look like. And then now from that place where we have an enhanced sense of an interior or, or certainly a self-awareness, let's start to play, let's start to practice these, these, these forms or these techniques together, these jiwaza or whatever you happen to do, and then observe what happens to the interior, maybe observe what happens to the other person's interior. And then what I would say, finally, the third move of, of, with that is to, and this is something that's not traditional in Japanese, 
is to create a reflective practice in you know a place where you can actually step back. It's okay, good. How was that for you? This is how it was for me. Let's share that. How how do you observe what's what's going on? Your second thing was you know doing the technical forms, and then you said observe. Uh, what is that like? What, what, what? Well, can, can you see my can you see my 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 picture right now? Yeah, yeah, I can. Sure can. Okay, what what's going on with me? What am I doing? <laughs> You're looking at something else right now. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Now I'm not sure if you heard, but I've got a sick uh, daughter here. Yeah, she's yeah. got a flu, and she's laying. She wanted to be in the room with me today, and and a lot of my care and concern is is there. So now I wasn't just doing something else. I was there was a sense of you know I feel like she's having a hard time. So you know care and concern and love and all that stuff. At a certain point, that that stuff is um, yeah, it's palpable. You can kind of pick it up. Yeah. So you start to kind of develop an intuitive sense. Not a logical, rational, but intuitive sense of the other person's interior. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the only way you can do that is if you've done a certain amount of work with your own interior. So that would be like the, 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 the three practical things that I would, I would say. And then you know, Patrick wants to add something. And, that, and all the time you're learning Ikkyo and Ikkyo Sankyo, you know, or Jiwaza or whatever. So, um, Don, um, I think uh, what Miles was looking at is, is that is an exploration in a in a contemplative direction that includes the other in the nature of that. And um, prior to that, I I uh, can can imagine exploring those Aikido exercises which help stimulate a, a, a realization of a, of um, of um, a deeper sense of self prior to a realization of, of a we state or a unified state, but more of a, a deeper state of, um, of ground of our being or ground of, ground of self. And the one that I, I use a number of them in class, but one that I, I've used in, in the past that, I, that I, I like, is if you imagine yourself being held, let's say in Murote Dori, okay? Two-handed two -handed grab on the arm, right? And let's say you give yourself uh, somebody who's, who's very, strong and and uh and uh and physically forceful in there and they've locked onto you and um in the normal way we would approach that moment would be to size perhaps maybe not you but in in my past growing up growing up in the world of aikido size that bouquet uh kind of establish a grounded sense of 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 body apply the technique in the way that i know i could be able to break through that hold and then start to redirect the his force in a way that I can draw him or, or pin him, and uh, and then then I am free. At the end of the exercise, I am free. He's no longer holding on to me. I've pinned him. I have thrown him. My freedom is a result of what I've done in uh, my technique. But uh, what I would suggest is is moving from a place of of feeling that and you're where somebody's holding on to you. And you have the idea that you are not free, and then start to actually question that, and to say, okay, is is he really truly holding on to me, holding on to who I am? And if there's, it doesn't take a, bit, a lot of a lot of effort, but if you just give yourself a moment, you realize that actually he's not holding on to you, because who you are is not graspable, who you deeply are is not graspable. He can grab onto your arm, but he can't grab onto you. And that is a realization that can occur in the midst of training. And when that, when that occurs, the body is suddenly uh, off leash. It's no longer posed in, in an antagonistical relationship with Uke. It, it comes back to its own physical freedom. And that physical freedom is, is self-evident. It's explored in a very different way. And the energy and the attack is no longer personal. And the uh, and the and the the idea that he has your freedom or is a threat to your freedom is gone. He's attacking the arm, and of course that needs to be recognized. But the relationship now is radically different, and that that opens up the capacity to explore um, uh, different possibilities other than the ones that you've only you've you've got the idea locked on. And so the the it just opens up to a physical ex exploration of freedom. But that freedom comes from the deep realization prior to that exploration. And it's not contingent upon him letting go. 
Because if you need him to be let go, you're always struggling to change our environment. We're always struggling to change our environment to access that freedom, that, that realization of freedom. And the, that will never happen because the, 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 the manipulation of our environment to access our, our freedom is, uh, is the trap that we're all stuck in. You know, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough friends. I don't have enough power. I don't have enough knowledge. I don't have the right situation. As soon as I refurbish the house, then I'll be free. As soon as I get that new job, then I'll be free. And all of these changes to our environment is, is what, the, you know, what all spiritual teachers are pointing to as being the trap of, of attempting to control our environment in order to be free. And that freedom is fundamentally inherent in our own self. And that realization can be accessed and tasted in, cl in class. And when that opens up, the capacity to respond uh, opens with that if you pay attention. And it doesn't mean that you're invincible. It doesn't mean that you're going to do what you want. But the capacity to experience and express that freedom is without limit. The possibility of expressing that freedom is without limit in each and every relationship. And that's always been my experience. I've never encountered any situation that has a limitless, uh, that, that limits that, that freedom. It doesn't mean I can do what I want, but there's always a sense of my possibilities are without limit. And that, in that freedom, there lies, therein lies uh, the, the Aikido for me. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Sure, sure. Um, this kind of leads into the, you know, really the second part of my question, which is if we describe what that looks like in this contemplative practice of Aikido, um, mm. you know, do you think this is the practice that was going on when Osunze was teaching his Aikido? Is this the no. way he was teaching the Aikido? No. That would be the pinnacle of what we're, we're you know, who's the founder. And... I didn't, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say that, although I think he was pointing to that, but he was using he was using metaphors deeply embedded in Shintoism and, and Buddhism and, and creative and his, his exploration. And he did do a lot of speaking, but I, I can't say, you know, when I read what he's saying, yes, I, that resonates with what he says in his texts, in terms of his spiritual teaching and what I'm experiencing feel very congruent and coherent. But in the end, um, we have to find our own way. We have to find our own way to bring what we realize into a congruent, coherent expression of, of in our lives in the, in the Aikido, but not only just in the Aikido, but in, in what we do. And, and that's the challenge. That's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the evolutionary process. And, um, and I do feel that's what Osensei was pointing to, but this is my interpretation of that. So I wouldn't necessarily go along to say that that's what he was doing in his classes. I actually, to tell you the truth, really, truly don't know. And also there's a difference between what he was doing and what he was teaching. Because like the, when I say what he was doing, uh, you know, from all, from all accounts, he would just get out there and just start expressing Aikido. Hmm. You know, that was just kind of an expression of it. And so he was already in this place where Aikido just happened through him. You know, it manifested through him. And um, I, there's, there, there was Humber Dojo, there was Iwama, there's a few different schools, and he, apparently he taught differently in those different places for whatever reason. Because, you know, look, look what's left behind. There's, there's quite different legacies that are left behind in those different places. So on the relative side of the street, I'm with Patrick, I don't know. And, um, but I think that when he was expressing Aikido, he was just in that place where it was just manifesting through him. And for sure, nobody felt like they were beat up by Osensei. Some people felt like they were completely disarmed and disempowered. You know, it's like, wow, what happened? You know, he took away all my, my, my tricks. I don't have, they don't work with this guy. But it, you never had to, you never heard, I never heard that he, somebody felt like they were manhandled by him. Or and abused. Him, or, right abused or you know with some type of negative somatic imprint left on their body following a training with them or something yeah i was just uh, thank you for that i was just kind of curious because i think about what i imagine a dojo full of this kind of practice looks like when i look around and then when i think about what i've seen of, of the practice going on in o sensei's classes or yamaguchi sensei's classes or even saito sensei's classes doesn't seem to look like what i'm imagining that we just described as far as a as far as our, our practices, I'm just reconciling those those two things and mm. a little bit. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting to me to think about, you know, because because my my last, 
Yeah, my, my last part of the question is, is you know, you guys said that you, somebody had said they're talking about the shift of Aikido talk is this contemplative practice, but that would that would be very inspiring to me if I believe that to be true, because what I see mm -hmm. in the world is, is we're being um, drugged down this other path in Aikido that I that I really For dislike, sure. and um, uh, you know, maybe I'm just spending my time in the wrong places. But if you're well, just, it, no, not, not necessarily, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I've trained with you. I wouldn't say you're wasting your time in the wrong places. So, <laughs> but but what I would say, that, I mean, think think of, think of it. When we do a technique, let's say you you know you 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 decide to either teach or do an Aikido, what are we doing? We're doing what we learned in the past. We're bringing it forward, and we're doing it in the present moment. So we're basically repeating the past. It's not a new it's not a new Picasso piece of art or anything like that. We're just taking the past. Now, if you just kind of it doesn't take much thinking, where is that going to lead us? We're just going to get better, faster, stronger about repeating that thing from the past. Well, Hopefully. I'm not necessarily. I'm not sure. I, I believe it entirely. I, I would have a little flavor of that. For me, I would yeah. say I have this this belief that, that the movements, the practice, the wazit themselves is a pattern for my own self discovery. And if I just do them enough, even if I don't think about it, even if I'm not necessarily contemplative, something's going to happen to me because I'm a. But, but there's an intention. There's an intention. There's some intention for self discovery there. And for me, that's the whole difference because self discovery only happens in the present moment. So, sure, we can be polishing, you know, polishing the mirror, uh, the same mirror over and over. But if I have that intention for self discovery, that's really all that's necessary. You know, self-discovery will, I mean, there's no guarantee, but if, you know, if, if it's applied properly, self-discovery happens regardless of whether we want it to or not. So, but that's the key for me. And that's what I, that's what I say about contemplative or certainly a certain amount of self-awareness. Yeah, no, I want to support this practice. Like I said, I was trying to, maybe I didn't articulate it right, but when I say what I see, where I'm spending my time, I'm, when I'm spending my time online, I'm seeing this dialogue going to a place that I don't like. In fact, I'm very anti the dialogue I'm watching. And I think, Miles, mm -hmm. you and I privately discussed this many times. Um, you know, it's a very, you know, does Aikido work or, you know, this this kind mm -hmm. of um, conversation. And, uh, well, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a cool question, but it's a flatline question. It lacks dimensionality. So it yeah. just keeps going more horizontal to get better, faster, stronger, yeah. which is, I, and, and there's nothing wrong with that pursuit, really. It's, it's an okay pursuit, but no, I think no. it, it, it's endless. For me, Aikido is an and also art. You can say all the things they say, and also, <laughs> and also it's this other thing, and yeah. also we do this other thing. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot of and yeah. also. Cool. I think, I think it, it, it helps to, for myself to, to recognize the difference because I think it, when we look at traditional Aikido, with the, 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 the hierarchical state of affairs and the, the, the technical repetition of the art and that in order to be able to do the art, you have to do it exactly like your teacher. And if you don't, you're doing it wrong. And that whole narrative needs to be challenged. And to be able to break out of that narrative, to be able to, to expand out of that narrative, to, to uh, push ourselves into new territory, to be either experience uh, other martial arts or cross train or anything along those lines is great. Um, as long as we don't lose the perspective that fundamentally uh, rose out of, of um, Osensei's work. And that perspective has to become our perspective, or at least that, that contem contemplative nature has to be ours. But in what you were saying, Don, I think, you know, when we practice the techniques, it feels like the, in the techniques, there's an echo of what Osensei was working on. Yeah. And for me, the, I love that. I feel that, by the way. The, That's fantastic. Yeah. the metaphor that I have is like, you know, when you, there's certain psych, psychological approaches where, you know, smile and you'll start to feel happy. And that for me is kind of what Aikido is where at now. Just do Shionage and then you'll start to feel harmony. And so, of course, smiling all the time may change your inner space a little bit, but until you really deep down go internally and, and come to a place where you fully are affirming yourself with life and that smile emerges authentically, it's not, it's not uh, satisfying because you just keep on feeling like you're attempting to modify the interior by changing the exterior. And that's where the continuing technical practice feels like it. There's an impact on the system but it doesn't feel satisfying until it comes from inside out. As long as it's going outside in, I'm always conforming my system to another person's idea. And there are echoes of it, there's feelings of it, there's nuances of it, 
but it never feels truly authentically satisfying until it comes from inside out. Right. And that's what the that's that's what I think we're referring to is is the attempt to align the practice in such a way that it facilitates that discovery. And that doesn't require a person to become technically perfect before that experience shows up. And we can actually get a taste of it. And then in tandem, increase our capacity in the techniques, but yeah. also increase our faith in being able to move from the inside out rather than yeah. from the outside in. Yeah. Uh, sensei, with Sothomi Sensei, I spent some time with, and he, he always talks about like, you know, sometimes it's like compost. Right, I think this is the compost you know we have, and so he's talking <laughs> a different narrative about about he says he uses the funny colorful language and he says compost sometimes, but and that's how it comes from the inside out is it's just the compost and then we express that as we as we grow from this yeah. compost, yeah, this compost, you know. Awesome, mm -hmm. cool. Don. Thanks, man. Yeah, my, thank you. Thank you both. Good to see you again so soon and hang out. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> All right, man. Take care. Well, look, Patrick, um, we've gone well over 90 minutes now. Yeah. So yeah. Um, would you like to say a word or two to finish off before we say goodbye to everybody? Just want to say thank you to everybody for coming and participating and, uh, and really happy for, the, for the, the, the sharing and the interchange. And I think this, this open dialogue is really essential uh, for us to move forward in, in the community of Aikidoka, to explore different domains and to actually a, a, acknowledge and and respect the different perspectives that show up and and i think there is therein lies can we meet each other with different perspectives and be able to acknowledge the the that every individual is going to have a unique take on that experience even if the experience is universal it's always going to be it's always going to be individuated and that that uh, that's that bridge can we meet in that universal nature and respect the different perspectives that come up from that and, um, and be able to share and dialogue and, and be able to also disagree and when those times uh, don't, aren't coherent, but to do so in such a way that we recognize that in that disagreement, we're supporting each other. We don't, we don't, we're not required to, uh, uh, to de deny the validity of the other in order to fundamentally honor um, what I'm trying to share. And it doesn't necessarily mean that all perspectives are, are equally um, mature, but it does mean that we, every individual has a right to their perspective, and in being a perspective, there's something valuable in that. And uh, for me, this is where I, I value the ability to work together with Miles, and in much of what we do, we share so much, but we also disagree too, but we don't find ourselves in, in antagonism or, or in a, in a zero-sum relationship when that happens. At least most of the time we don't. Sometimes we <laughs> Not for too long. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> and that's the practice. That's the pressure. Exactly. Is can we bring it to can we bring it to a more coherent phase of ourselves? And and that's why I feel like I want to help support uh, in the future within the Aikido community. That's that's where it becomes interesting. Great. Okay. But, well, uh, so so look, we had forty two people join us today, and about thirty one are still with us. So first, I want to say thanks to everybody who who joined the call and bringing all your good energy. Thank you all very much. And then also thank you very much, Patrick, for, uh, for sharing the space once again. And uh, thank you to Teja Hudomio Bell, who's already left the call, and Richard Moon. It was great to hear your guys' voices as well. And if you want to get together and do what we've been talking about, because you know, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's the fun part, um, come join us. Come join Patrick and I in the uh, middle of May. Riviera Seminar in, yeah. in Vevey, Switzerland. Um, the website is rivieraseminar.com. Is that right, Patrick? Yeah, that's it. Great. I will post it in the Aikido to Leading Edge group. Um, if you're not in the Aikido to Leading Edge group on Facebook, go Aikido to Leading Edge and ask to be added, and I'll add you right away. All right, everybody. Take care. All the best. Mm -hmm.